Now, sun and cold, I mean, I can do that, and that's all right. You're still getting sunshine, and sunshine is happiness. In the UK, though, I mean, we don't see sun for almost six months over the winter. It's cold, it's wet, it's dark, and this has a huge impact on your body. Now, today, I'm taking you guys to see a specialist in diet, a specialist in supplementation, Nikki Kie, and she's going to talk me through how best to look after my body this winter to stay fit, to stay healthy, and to stay ready for the season next year. It's now dark and it's raining, and I'm in need of some warmth, a cup of tea, and some good nutrition advice. Oh Jones. my god, I am soaked. Kevin, Thank Kevin you James, so much. The the horrible English Lovely to see you again, Nikki, James. And, and you, James. Nice to meet Come you. In. Right, well, we'd better have a chat about what to do if the weather's like this outside. Okay, so I've dried myself off. I'm warm. I've had a cup of tea, thanks to Nikki, and she's looking after me very well. But I have had huge problems over my career racing with staying healthy in the winter. I mean, like, you know, we all have the, few, you know, the, the common cold, and I think when you start to have two, three, four bouts of the cold, you've got to question why that is. Now, I've often wondered why this is, and I've heard it could, it could potentially be down to nutrition and the way you supplement yourself over the winter. So, Nikki, what am I doing wrong, potentially? I just did a study of cyclists, and I was a little bit concerned because some of the cyclists, uh, in my opinion, weren't getting their basic nutrition uh, nailed. So the first thing is to stay healthy, especially over the winter, is make sure your basic nutrition is uh, well balanced. You've got your carbs, your protein, your fresh fruit and veg. Does this differ to the season then? Should we be eating different things in the winter? Uh, bear in mind we haven't got as much high intensity exercise. Do we change the quantity of carbohydrates to proteins well, to fats? Pro I mean, protein is a constant throughout. Uh, maybe depending on what your training schedule is, uh, you won't need uh, quite so many total calories, but uh, equally you don't want to go to the other extreme. You don't want to do it either extreme. You don't want to eat a whole uh, uh, cake or a whole load of mince pies, but equally you don't want Some to. Of us might do yeah, that. just in case you're thinking that might be a strategy. No, of course, let you allow yourself some treats. So really, just trying to keep on an even keel over Christmas, which can be challenging uh, because there are family meals and all sorts of things. So the first thing is just make sure you got the basics right. The other thing I would say is hydration, especially over the winter, you won't necessarily feel thirsty as you do when you're in the summer and you're sweating a lot. Okay, so first of all, like, it's important to get your nutrition and yes. hydration right. So. And once you've done that, I mean, I've taken a fair few supplements over, my, over, over the years, and I've often wondered what are the best supplements to take. You go into your health food store and you're greeted by 500 different yeah, vitamins on the shelves. And you're thinking, how on earth am I going to choose anything out of this? So what I'd really like to know, is there like maybe five top vitamins that I could focus on to take, which is going to help my immunity and help my, yeah. um, my strength and performance over the winter? Goodness, yeah, well, definitely, especially winter. Um, we live in England, there isn't much sun anyway, and it's pitch black outside. So vitamin D is, number, is my number one choice. Most vitamins and minerals you have to take in through your diet, through nutrition, but there's only a limited amount of vitamin D you can take in that way. The rest you have to make yourself through sunlight. And because there isn't much sunlight around, then you have to take uh, specific supplements for that. And the reason why vitamin D is top of my list is for three reasons. Bone health, muscle strength, uh, and immunity. In theory, you should, if you're having a balanced diet, pretty much have most of these covered, but vitamin D being the exception. But other ones which can go a little bit by the wayside, um, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, or if you don't eat much red meat, B12 can be low. And on a similar vein, uh, iron, ferritin, that's found in, in red meat. Yeah. And so if you don't eat much red meat, I don't know how to say. Um, so just to keep the red blood cells, that's important for making red blood cells, so you yeah. want those. Yeah. Uh, and then other, so those are the three, and then other, sort of 
You don't need many of these other things. You don't need much zinc and magnesium. Um, but if you don't have those little um, micronutrients, that can make a difference to how well your enzymes are working and, and like we said, immunity. So uh, if you're not eating a varied diet and you don't like nuts and things like this, which have these things in, those are other things you might want to consider. Just seeing if you are taking a multivit, has, that got, has it got those key things in? Okay, so supplements are one thing, but if we're talking about general health, I mean, in the winter it's quite often, when it's cold, wet, and even icy the further into winter we get, we can't always ride our bike. Yeah. Slippery leaves, dangerous. Slippery leaves, dangerous, and we have to stay safe at all times. So when we are looking for something to feel like we've achieved something and we're benefiting our cycle at the same time, if we can't ride a bike or we are fed up to the back teeth of Zwift, what else? There comes a time. There comes a time for all of us. I don't like riding inside. So you're going to give me three different exercises, is that it? Correct. Right, so I better get down on the floor, get on the mat. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm being told now what to do. Right, onto the mat. See you in a minute. What do I do? Okay, so uh, lie on your front and put on your forearms. So bend your arms, there we go. Like this. Uh, exactly. And so it's called a plank. It's a nice straight uh, alignment there. So you're pushing down actively through your forearms and that will engage the muscles in your back. It's really working my core as yeah, well. Yeah, and you're pulling in your, in, in your abs. And you're squeezing your bottom gently. And if you, that's an excellent alignment. So just be cautious when, if you are doing this, make sure that you're not letting your back sag. So keep pulling in your tummy towards the backbone, okay? To keep in a nice straight line. And if you can hold that for about, I didn't time it, but I would suggest you hold that for about 30 seconds. And then you can repeat again if you want. If you want to advance this exercise and you think that's super easy, uh, then James, can you lift one foot off the ground? Just hover it off the ground, that's it, and lower. And then do the other leg. Just hover it and lower. Okay, so that's exercise number one, the good old-fashioned plank. Make sure you're pulling in your abs. And if you want to advance it, you can lift one leg at a time. Shall we give you a rest now? <laughs> right, so exercise number two. Uh, as a cyclist, you've got... Ashley, can you just show us the normal cycling thing on the bike? It's so a bit rounded. So that's a shoe. We're sat on the saddle. Yeah. Our back's very arched. It's not a natural curve. So it's back. rounded, and yeah. You're, you're leaning forward like this. So it's a rounded back, you can see there. And also, that's also the posture often on a computer or wrapping up Christmas presents or whatever you're doing. So to counteract that, uh, James, if you can lie on your front, yeah. uh, forehead on the deck, and arms by your side, palms to the ceiling. Okay? So now we're going to strengthen up the back muscles. So you take a breath in, and then as you breathe out, raise the upper body and your head just off the mat, and you can just lift the feet. You see the feet are just coming off the ground as well. And this, that's excellent, because you've got to keep looking down at the mat. Because if you try and lift your head too much, you're just going to yank your neck. So hold it there, say, for a count of 10 or something, and then lower with control. Imagine this is the bal this is my belly bob. Imagine this is so the this kitchen is the, surface. Yeah. So okay, so you're waiting for the turkeys in the oven. What you're going to do? So you just stretch out your back. So make your your body parallel with the ground. So drop down. Ah, that's lovely. So you can stretch out. Exactly. And you should feel a nice stretch on your back. A nice long line there. So it's just a nice uh, the opposite to what you do when you're cycling. And then you can round the back as you come up, like a sort of a body wave like that, exactly, and come up to standing. So you don't need, again, you don't need fancy kit. You can just do that on the work surface or your desk or whatever, just to stretch the back out. Standing lunges, so just uh, lunge one foot forward. I'll just talk you through it. So is this a focus on explosivity? Then? Exactly, so right. th this is a lunge, and if you can get your... Uh, the key points for this are make sure both your kneecaps are going forwards, so no kneecap deviating to the side or turning the knee in or anything, and ideally get that back knee as low to the ground as you can. And then you've got to push off the front foot and return to your stand position. So push now, push, up, and then you lunge forward the other legs. That's it. So alternate legs, so lunge forward, head up, posture, and then push off that front leg, hoopla, off you go again. So you just repeat like that. Okay, so I've just finished my third exercise now, the lunges, so they're quite dynamic, I notice, like, I mean, obviously cycling be a dynamic sport, is it important to make sure that the exercises that we do do are dynamic as well? I think probably a mixture. So the first exercise you did was the plank for core control, 
Um, so called isometric uh, contraction of the muscles, which is what you have to maintain your posture when you're on the bike. So it's important to do that, but it's also, like you said, explosive exercise as well, different types of muscles. So you need a mixture of both. Um, and then we had a little stretch there as well. So using your muscles in different ways as you need them to do when you are on your bike. Also say without the exercises, if you haven't done any of those before, just go easy. Don't launch into doing 100 reps or something. Um, just do one at a time and just make sure you've got really good secure technique. And if you're not sure, ask advice or ask a friend uh, to have a look and make sure that your knees are in alignment and all that sort of thing. So yeah, sometimes less is more. Absolutely. Quality, not, not quantity. quantity. There you go. Right, so I hope you enjoyed this information overload on how to stay fit, how to stay healthy throughout the winter. We have nutrition advice, supplementation advice, and we have some core exercise that we can do. So huge thanks to Nikki for giving me her expertise. You can check her out on her website. I'll put the link below. So go and have a dig through that if there's anything else you'd like to know on the matters that we've talked about today. For now, I'm going to sign out because I'm about to ride home. It's pitch black. It's chucking it down with rain and I'm going to be getting straight in the bath. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you all next week.